Yeah, so our recording is in progress. Uh, let's pray and uh, we'll begin. I uh, would like to request uh, uh, one of us to please lead in prayer. Anyone? Can I lead? Yeah, sure, Charles, please. Let's pray. Father God, we are really thankful to you. Therefore, you brought us, and now we are here for another <clears throat> class. Yes, Lord. This is our second class for this course. Lord, we pray that you will help us understand your secrets of the prophetic and the apostleship. Lord, we pray that all will be done according to your glory. We pray for connectivity, that the internet will be stable. But also, you will anoint our teacher, that she will release the right of a pattern, and will be able to hear her well and be able to understand, so that we shall not miss anything, but we will be able to apply the principles we are learning from the class to the church that you have given us for proper growth. We thank you, Lord, that you are doing this for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Charles. So uh, in the last class, we just had an introduction of uh, the prophetic and we talked about how it is so important for us to hear uh, God's voice so that we can live our lives according to that. Um, and uh, we saw how God is restoring you know, different uh, truths back to the body of Christ. And uh, most recently, we uh, see that in, in the area of um, the prophetic, you know, the apostolic, the things like that, God is really moving upon the body of Christ and uh, 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 people, uh, not just our understanding of these things, but also people are beginning to get activated and move in these things. So uh, uh, we're only going to see more and more of um, this happening around us uh, and also we had a very uh, very brief introduction about the progress of the prophetic we are going to touch on all these things later in detail so that's the reason uh, i didn't take us through many of the scriptures right uh, then and there but we we will uh, study it in detail later so we saw how uh, there is uh, the basic gift of prophecy that um, all believers can flow in then um, we have some people who may have the grace gift of prophecy, which means that uh, the ministry that that uh, one has, uh, it, it is uh, very prophetic. Okay? So that is the prophetic ministry. Uh, then again, we saw how uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, as in Ephesians 4, has um, appointed a few people in the office of the prophet and those are the individuals whom we call as prophets so not everyone who prophesies would be a prophet okay so this is uh, some of uh, these are some of the basics that we actually touched upon and then we saw uh, an example pastor had shared his own life story about how um, someone spoke over his life and many of the things that were spoken uh, have uh, come to pass and he's waiting on the Lord for the others also to come to pass. So the prophetic word is really from God. And when we speak that word um, uh, in one way, you know, I've heard people say that uh, if we make our effort to hear accurately from God and then release uh, the word of God accurately, then uh, from then on, it's God's responsibility, you know, in a sense, to fulfill that word because it is his word and he will do it. And we saw that scripture from Isaiah 44 where um, God's word says that the Lord will perform you know, the counsel of uh, his servants. So uh, there is a great sense of confidence uh, when prophecy is done right because you know, we are speaking in line with what is upon God's heart and uh, it really begins to minister and work in people's lives. So this is something that we touched upon in the last class. And today what we will see is we will see how to perceive prophecy. Okay, uh, Once again, uh, it's very introductory and uh, basic what we're going to do today. We are going to uh, go deep into the very uh, gift of prophecy and then you know again we're going to talk about how we hear from God once again uh, but today 
you know overall how is it that we get to receive how how do we pick up the prophetic word okay so that is what we are going to answer once again uh, we will look at our uh, class notes here uh, from where we will uh, study so i was on page yeah page uh, 5 Okay, page five where we looked at the the prophecy there um, and uh, we'll continue page six i'm going to start from page six so uh coming to the the bible it's very interesting to note that the first person who is termed as a prophet is actually abraham now in the life of abraham many of us would notice that he was not someone who went around saying thus says the lord releasing a word over people's lives he never did things like that and yet you know, god addresses abraham as a prophet in genesis 20 verse 7 uh, god speaks to abimelech and tells him about abraham and says he is a prophet he will pray for you and you shall live and there's so much to learn from the life of Abraham about the prophetic. He's called as a prophet, not because he released prophetic words, but because his life was prophetic. Okay, we say that because he was constantly in communion with God. He was led by God. And we know how you know, God promised him uh, a son and how God led him, how he put his faith and trust in God and he always followed after God. So his life was prophetic uh, and God is giving him this recognition and he says he is a prophet. Abraham is a prophet. Okay, so because his life was prophetic. So that's what, that's the first thing we take from Abraham's life. And so you see here that uh, the term which is used in Hebrew there uh, when God says he is a prophet, that's the word Nabi. And the word Nabi means inspired man. We know that inspiration is the communication that we receive from God. So Abraham is termed as a prophet or a Nabi or an inspired man who heard from God. Okay, so that is the second thing. Abraham uh, is a prophet because he was receiving from God. Now, the third thing here is, you know, in the circumstance um, uh, that, that came about where uh, Abimelech really wanted healing and God wanted to um, bring that about through Abraham's prayer, uh, God told Abimelech, he is a prophet, he will pray for you and you shall live. So. The third thing is that the life of the prophet is associated with prayer. And look at how um, encouraging this is. God, if God were to say this about any one of us, right? So and so will pray for you and you will live. So Abraham is connected so beautifully in prayer with God that even God is confident. And God is affirming and he's saying this man, he will pray for you and you will live so there is a connection of the prophetic with prayer now can the prophetic exist without prayer no without prayer without communication with god how can one receive okay, it's just not possible so when we talk about the prophetic this is the inference the prophetic cannot exist without prayer so for us to be prophetic, we have to grow in a life of prayer. Okay? Can there be people who are very prayerful and not prophetic? That is possible. Okay? One can be very prayerful, but not prophetic. It simply means that we pray um, anything. We pray according to our own will. We pray based on what we have decided. Uh, and is that invalid? No, not at all. We can still pray and God hears our prayers. But prophetic prayers are those uh, that are prayed through in line with what God is saying. Now, you would remember there was a time when God decided to um, uh, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Even at that point, 
the kind of uh, prayer life and the communication that Abraham had with God in Genesis 18 verse 17 you know, God um, says the Lord said shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing so you know he was connected with God uh, strongly and in prayer uh, and you see that God revealed to him okay and based on that what was Abraham's response when God spoke to him and said that um, there's going to be judgment poured upon Sodom and Gomorrah he began interceding and we've studied about intercession earlier okay but this kind of intercession was prophetic intercession because it was in response to the uh, communication from God that there is going to be judgment and we know, you know Abraham he stood before the Lord and then he started um, uh, you know kind of um, appealing to him he started saying okay God if there are so many righteous people would you please spare the land so that is prophetic intercession that is in response to what God is doing so now these are all some of uh, the the key things about the prophetic that we learn from the life of Abraham that one is a prophet not because they prophesy but you know because of hearing from God and having a, a life that is so connected with God and his uh, his message Secondly, we, we saw in the life of Abraham that prayer, okay, prayer plays a huge role uh, in the prophetic. We cannot be prophetic if we are not prayerful. And thirdly, you know, we see that you know, Abraham was an intercessor. Right? He was an intercessor. He would hear from God, uh, a prophetic intercessor, and then he would uh, take that to the Lord in prayer. So some, some key things that really will make a difference in our prophetic journey. Now, Let's understand. We also saw that Abraham was an inspired man. Okay, the word Nabi there. Now, that was about Abraham. Now, let's consider um, uh, the lives of Moses and Aaron. Now, when God met Moses at the burning bush, uh, there was a commission. God wanted him to go and speak to Pharaoh. Uh, but we know that Moses had his own insecurities and he came up with excuses and said, God, you know, I can't speak and all. Uh, and at that time, God uh, told him that he could take the assistance of Aaron. Okay? So these passages are there in our notes. You could um, have a look at it. It is 4 uh, verses 14 through 16 where God says, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth. And I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people and he himself shall be as a mouth for you and you shall be to him as God. Okay. So here we, we understand that God is putting uh, Aaron as a spokesman. Is the message Aaron's? No. The message is coming from Moses. No, the message that God gives Moses, but spoken by Aaron. So Aaron is the spokesman. In another verse, Exodus 7, 1, God says, See, I have made you as God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. Okay, Aaron, your brother, shall be your prophet. So who is Aaron in this equation? He is Moses' spokesman. And now we are told that Aaron shall be your prophet. And that word there is Nabi. Okay? And Nabi, once again, it's uh, used like 309 times um, in the Old Testament. And basically what it means is, um, yeah, that's Nabi is an inspired person. But Nabi is also a mouthpiece. Okay, One is a mouthpiece. It's like... Um, Post, like here uh, here in India, we, we have this uh, postal services where people come and hand you a letter, 
that someone has written to you. you know not so much anymore because of email but you know you understand what i mean right the message is somebody else's but there is another person who comes and delivers so the prophet is one who is assigned to deliver the message the message itself is not of the prophet it is from god but here is our understanding okay from moses and aaron this is what we get we get that a prophet or a nabi is a mouthpiece or a spokesperson so even when we uh begin to learn more about getting activated in the uh, gift of prophecy this is what we must understand you know it's not uh, something that uh, i can come up with or you can come up with right and also in a way it's good to have this understanding because then we don't take credit for it right uh, something wonderful happens you share uh, to someone and then they say wow you know pastor you said this and it happened you know sometimes we ourselves are amazed we and we wonder oh really did did it did it work out that way uh, that's wonderful because we are just a mouthpiece okay uh, we are a spokes person or uh, you want to call postman postwoman you have the message of god and our responsibility is to sincerely deliver the message okay and that is how we have seen uh, the prophets and the prophetic function in the word of god and these are some truths that we can learn from the life of moses and aaron so uh, a class i hope uh, you all are okay is it too fast or comfortable are you able to get what uh, we are talking about here just some response from you yes ma'am it's good okay great okay wonderful okay we we'll, let's continue then thank you yeah all right now let's uh, i told you we are going to understand how to perceive the prophetic message okay so now we've we've uh, got a picture of what the message is who the messenger is now we'll continue i'm on page 8 here and we from the old testament will look at the process of receiving the word of god okay there are a couple of terms that are used to describe prophets and these terms also tell us how the prophet got the message okay and this is for for our understanding and it shows us how the human spirit really picks up god's communication so uh, uh in first chronicles 29 verse 29 okay these are all just some references i told you that the word nabi is used 309 times so you know there are many passages where these words are used but for our understanding you know one particular passage here first chronicles 29 29 it says now the acts of king david first and last indeed they are written in the book of samuel the seer okay samuel the seer now in hebrew seer is roe in the book of nathan the prophet prophet then in hebrew nabi and in the book of gad the seer seer there is the word hose so you're like wow aren't all these men prophets so what is this whole distinction two of them in english are called seer and one is called prophet but when you look up the hebrew there are three distinct words there uh, to describe all of them are prophets but there are three words to describe them so one would be roe one would be nabi and the other would be hose okay and basically uh, it just refers to uh, the process that happens um, in receiving god's word so both roe and hose translated as seer in english it simply means that these prophets probably received god's communication through visualization okay seer isn't that clear seer you see something you visualize something now this something we will talk later it can be a picture it can be um uh you know uh, something like a like a motion image 
maybe like a movie or an incident uh, that that you are able to see or you can look into the spirit realm and you can uh, understand how things are though the natural realm looks a certain way in the spirit realm things look very different so one uh, possibly is able to see into the spirit realm okay so the main method okay, what we are trying to conclude is there is a visualization process associated with the receiving of the message okay nabi we said nabi nabi is who nabi is inspired we'll talk about that also later so can you see right now we have understanding of two at least two different uh, processes one is to be inspired the other one is to see and receive a message so you know uh, people could receive from god in either one of these ways now let's uh, continue now there um, again tend to be a little more explanation about nabi okay we will come to that so amos um, amos chapter 7 verses 14 and 15 again these passages uh, this passage we will read it says then amos answered and said to amaziah i was no prophet nabi okay the word you said is nabi nor was i a son of a prophet nabi but i was a sheep breeder and a tender of sycamore fruit then the lord took me as i followed the flock and the lord said to me go prophesy nabi to my people israel okay so we we have a little clarity about see visualization pro process now this term nabi over here right uh, this inspiration inspiration now how does that inspiration really um, come into us there's another word in micah chapter 2 um, verse 11 okay where it's associated with the words you know prophet prophesy that is the word nataf and nataf really means to ooze out or to bubble up okay it's it's something like um, uh, if you've ever heated milk you know when it it's fully boiled and it's done rises up okay it kind of rises up it pours over now if you're not careful then it it would you know pour out of your 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 vessel uh, or we we know about springs right springs the way the water begins to bubble up uh, at the source these are all just for us to have a have a a, a visual um reference to what this oozing looks like so the nabi prophet the inspired prophet uh, is also one who has the message of the lord oozing up or in other words bubbling up in him or her so to simplify this you know i would say that uh, you know when we receive revelation now some of you could relate with this okay, even today uh, this is how many of us receive god's word some of us we are very visual when we pray uh, we probably get an image and then you know we based on that image we release a prophetic word or we pray over people but then there could be some of us who don't see anything but when we start praying it's as if the words are flowing and you're wondering hey i i i'm not even thinking about this it's just coming out of me that's more of the nabi style okay uh, but we could also be functioning in the seer style now all this technicality is not to box god up you know god speaks um, in creative ways and uh, god can um, give us a message in either of or uh, either of the you know styles or uh, process whatever you want to call it uh, so we must not say that i am a seer kind of a uh, uh, you know uh, my my style of prophecy is seer uh, style or my style is uh, more of uh, the nabi where i get inspired by god you never know when while praying i mean it's happened to me uh, sometimes i see sometimes it just comes uh, sometimes in the same prayer i see a little bit i it oozes up a, a bit some message just comes through in my spirit so god can work in any which way uh, all this understanding is not to classify uh, 
ourselves as one of the two or uh, to box God up and say this is the only way in which God speaks to so and so or the only way in which God speaks to me. Uh, but just for our understanding, you know, this the these processes uh, where where what the prophets of old, you know, have um, sort of uh, worked with and uh, it just helps us uh, understand the human spirit better and understand how God communicates with the human spirit. Okay, so uh, so now we have uh, this this uh, basic understanding of the inspiration, uh, way of receiving from God and also the see or the visual way of receiving from God. Okay, now let's move on. How does a prophet okay, hear from God? Now, one thing about, before we go into uh, exactly how we receive the word, you know, one thing about the prophetic word is it comes with a sense of seriousness, okay? Uh, because, you know, we if we know anything about our God, his word is not in vain, isn't it? He said one sentence, let there be light. And there was light. One sentence. And, you know, you associate that with creation. So when God speaks, it's not for our entertainment. You know, when God speaks, it's not so that, yeah, I just have extra time and I'm saying, there is a seriousness associated with every word of God. And uh, we must give God that honor for his word and thereby uh, even the prophet Amos you know, he records he says uh, surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants the prophets a lion has roared who will not fear the Lord God has spoken who can but prophesy this is in Amos 3 verses 7 and 8 where basically what Amos is saying is when God speaks the Lord has spoken who can but prophesy similar to when the lion roars in the jungle okay there is a sense of awe there's a sense of fear oh okay the king of the jungle somewhere here uh, and uh, you know all the animals all the creatures uh, are afraid there is a reaction and a response to the voice of the lion so in the same way the voice of god there is a seriousness attached to it and to a prophet or uh, let's also use the word somebody who prophesies you know it it's like wow god has spoken what do i do with this word i can't just uh, you know let it go and we will learn you know, not every word is meant to just be spoken out there are uh, things that god may reveal for us to pray them through so there are different ways in which we will uh, work with the prophetic word but you know, there is a sense of seriousness attached with the prophetic word. Now, similarly, you know, Jeremiah also, he shares his experience in Jeremiah 20, where he says, you know, the word of God, when it was spoken to him, he says he, that the word uh, it in my heart, like a burning fire shut up in my bones. Okay, so he says, wow, you know, if there's a burning fire shut up in our bones, uh, we are aware of it. Uh, we can't just, you know, let it be and go on with life. It doesn't ha work that way. But there is a sense of seriousness attached to it. And so Jeremiah, you know, he uh, stepped out and he prophesied when the Lord put. And, you know, basically he, he talks about how God, you induced me, uh, you know, uh, you you uh, prevailed, Lord. Okay, So the word, when God spoke it to Jeremiah, it came with such compulsion that he had to uh, go ahead and uh, release that prophetic ministry. Okay, So there is that seriousness attached to the uh, word of God and uh, God speaks to his people. Now, the way in which God speaks, okay, we'll touch a little bit uh, more on that and then go to how we receive this communication now, when we say god speaks god speaks okay so recently i had a, a little child like a four-year-old ask me this question what are you saying god told me god told me i can't hear anything you know she basically came and told me that and i i really appreciated her for her honesty uh, she's like i can't hear is there something wrong with my ears so basically you know then i was trying to tell her no it, it's not uh, 
when we say god speaks uh, he has a way a common way that is seen in the bible and that's how uh, we receive his communication so in the book of hosea hosea chapter 12 verse 10 now we uh, see that god says i have spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions i have given symbols through the witness okay so two words here how did god speak through the prophets two words visions symbols okay so not that god can speak in an audible voice of course he can however most commonly this is how god spoke and continues to speak visions symbols okay uh and if we don't have the understanding that god is trying to say something we will miss the communication so how does god speak through visions through symbols okay another passage here is from numbers numbers chapter 12 verses 5 through 8 you now again uh, god uh, says lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called aaron and miriam and they both went forward then he said hear now my words if there is a prophet among you i the lord make myself known to him in a vision i speak to him in a dream not so with my servant moses he is faithful in all my house i speak to him face to face even plainly and not in dark sayings and he sees the form of the lord why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant moses so god is saying that he spoke directly to moses but how did he speak to all the others a few more terms to you to add to our list vision dreams then dark sayings okay. so earlier we saw visions symbols what does it mean see god uh his general way of communication is through visions okay visions we understand and we'll talk more about it later you know what is a vision what are the different types we'll talk about it later dreams okay dreams also we understand so that's another way in which god brings his communication now there are two other terms which uh, many people may not be familiar with symbols dark sayings you know, that they have to do with um uh things like parables Okay, parables. You know, you understand when Jesus said uh, there was a woman. She lost her coin. She had ten coins. She lost one coin, and then she was searching for that one coin. But is it about the coins? No. It's about a lost soul. Right. So when you interpret the parable, there is a message, and God God speaks like that. in parables so when you say dark sayings symbols it has to do with parables it has to do with um, you know we say similitudes comparisons sometimes uh, uh, if if you've seen i remember i prayed for one person and i could see a pillar okay uh, and what does it mean so while praying for her i said okay this is what the lord says you are strong i didn't say you are a pillar you have to interpret the symbol you have to interpret the symbol so uh, god speaks through these symbols he speaks through dark sayings you know sometimes we have these dreams and we wake up thinking what what did that mean you know i was wearing this dress and that happened and so and so came and what does it mean how is god speaking to us symbols dark sayings it has to be interpreted there are some comparisons there are some riddles in there okay uh, uh, there could be a, a, a drama for example agabus you know agabus he goes to paul he takes paul's uh, belt he ties it around himself he binds himself and he says the person uh, whose this is will be bound it's very dramatic but it is a prophetic word it's not direct he's not agabus not telling paul you when you go to jerusalem you will be caught and then there on you will be imprisoned no it there there is some amount of interpretation required to get the message so 
this is the common way in which God speaks. So we can be alert to the communication of God. Did you have a vision? Did you have a dream? Was there a, a, a picture that came to your mind? God is trying to say something. Okay, so uh, this is how God speaks to us. Now let's move on. Uh, I told us that we are going to study a little more about how to receive God's communication. So the experience of um, the prophet called Balaam is very helpful. Um, a lot of us do not want to study from Balaam's life because he is known as a prophet who prophesied for profit okay which is not good and uh, there is a rebuke when you study the books of second peter the book of jude you know, there's a uh, there, there there are statements that say don't be like balaam okay, he was greedy uh, he he did god's work for his own benefit so don't be like him yeah we get that however you know, there is something valuable that we can learn from his prophetic process and his prophetic experience so numbers chapter 24 verses 15 and 16 i'm on page 10 in our notes um, here we see how balaam received god's communication verse 15 it says so he took up his oracle and said the utterance of balaam the son of boer and the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened the utterance of him who hears the words of god and has the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. Just in these two verses, it's like a lot of secrets uh, have been uh, revealed. So these are all ways in which the Prophet Balaam is receiving God's communication. What are, what are those ways? He says, eyes wide open eyes are opened okay, we'll talk about that then later he says hear the words of god so he was hearing god's word how how was he hearing god's word we'll talk about that has the knowledge of the most high so he got god's knowledge how did he get it now we'll talk about that and who sees the vision of the almighty again remember how does god speak God speaks through visions. So Balaam also had that experience, the vision of the Almighty. And then, of course, he says, falls down with eyes wide open. Okay, So that is his last experience there. So these are all ways in which even today we can perceive the message of the Lord. So the first one here that Balaam refers to, he says, his eyes were opened eyes wide open so this simply means looking into the spirit realm if you all remember uh, elisha in second kings um, he tells his servant gehazi you know you go and you see outside and then uh, he comes back to tell elisha that there are armies standing uh, surrounding them but you know elisha with uh, his his view uh, into the spirit realm looks around and he says look they may seem like the majority but we are the majority because uh, heavenly hosts are with us how how could elisha see that what what was he thinking well elisha was looking into the spirit realm yes it was a reality that in the physical realm it was just elisha and his servant and they were surrounded but that was not the spiritual reality the spiritual reality was that god was backing them up so when balaam also uh, says that his eyes were wide open it is a discernment which uh, uh, which elisha, elisha balaam had uh, of the spirit and we know when we study about the workings of the holy spirit and the gifts of the holy spirit you know there's a discerning of of spirits even that god uh, gives us as a gift that through that ability you know, we are able to look into the spirit realm and we are able to gauge and um, you know look at what exactly is going on so you know we can perceive into the spirit realm another good example is stephen if you recall uh, he was uh, being stoned uh, but 
in those moments right like before he he uh, committed himself he uh, uh, he died uh, we see that he saw like heaven open jesus was standing did the others around him see it no the others didn't how did stephen see it but through his spirit and into the spirit realm so eyes wide open it refers to those spiritual eyes uh, being awakened and um, you know enlightened where we can look into the spirit realm yeah, and even isaiah the prophet you know he talks about uh, uh, i i saw the lord seated on the throne and the train of his robe isaiah what, where I, I can't see no throne here but it is into the spirit realm so uh, this is one of the ways in which you and i can receive god's communication we through our spirit can look into the spirit realm uh, and we we know you know what is going on and what god is telling us so that is one of the ways in which balam perceived now the second way of perception is uh, he talks about he heard the words of the lord okay is it possible to hear god's audible voice answer is yes but in most um, most people's experiences uh, we we have seen that uh, it, it's more of receiving the words in our spirit rather than hearing the audible voice okay now samuel is a great example in the bible we know that uh, god called him samuel samuel and eli uh, a man who was so seasoned in the ministry taught samuel and told hey that's the voice of god if you hear it another time you say that lord here i am so samuel heard the audible voice of god and it's very clear that only he heard it eli didn't hear it samuel had to go and tell eli this is what it is so god speaks audibly even but the instances are few and far between uh thereby to hear god's voice uh generally means to receive words from god okay so uh let's put it this way the words come in without any sound so when god is speaking to me i might hear uh i might get a word in my spirit i might just get the word mumbai okay and i'm thinking hey where should i go which job should i take and i get the word mumbai and i'm like okay i understood did god say mumbai i didn't hear anything but the word came into my spirit so basically it's like you hear minus the sound and that's how the human spirit picks it up most of the time so it can be a word or it can be like how um, god spoke to holy spirit spoke to philip remember go overtake this chariot it's a it's a sentence so more than a single word can come into our spirit and that is the hearing from god then balam also says he received the knowledge of the most high receiving the knowledge of the most high is you know, like the nabi uh, sort of um, uh, perception where things bubble up in your spirit nothing was there a lot of preachers i've heard them say this um, i didn't know what to preach and uh, suddenly the message was there remember we discussed about the mary miracle uh, now i know that you know it, it's not like a good practice to uh, always depend on something bubbling up because we are also called to study and be prepared but you know it happens or uh, if you want to use internet language it's like a download there's nothing but then suddenly there's something and i've also heard people say that they sought the lord and uh, they have received the knowledge to such an extent that they have a things like i have a book in my spirit you know to have that much of content where did you get it from receive what balam is saying i received the knowledge of the lord it's like a piece of his knowledge came into your spirit and then you know you are able to minister with that so receiving the knowledge of the lord that's another way and of course you know he says i saw the vision of the almighty vision we all understand a single picture or a motion picture or um, you know something visual that that comes into our spirit it could also be a dream uh, there there can be a trance you know, so many things can happen then finally uh, balam said that he fell down with eyes wide open now this is more of um, uh, a picture of a trance 
Okay, so he was in a trance, eyes wide open, uh, physical eyes could have been open, but the ultimate thing is that his spiritual eyes were open. Okay, he was in a trance, and in those moments, God was was speaking. God was. Uh, imparting things into his spirit. So you know, here's the, the bottom line of both of these introductory classes that we've had yesterday and today. God speaks. We serve a God who speaks. And we just have to learn how to hear from him, how to understand what he's saying, uh, and, uh, you know, grow in it, develop in it. Because you know, why would God speak if he didn't want us to hear it? He definitely wants us to hear it. But there are uh, there are passages that, that you can look up that say that not only does he want to speak of the usual things, but God is a God who can also reveal secrets. You know, remember the life of Daniel, uh, you know, Daniel 2.22. Uh, we see there that our God reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. Okay, so that is uh, coming through from Daniel's experience. And then uh, again, we, we see there uh, in those passages, there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. That's what Daniel says. Okay, So God, God knows God uh, doesn't keep it to himself. He also speaks. So we, as we go through this entire course, uh, I'm sure that, you know, we, we will um, perceive, not that God is not speaking right now. He is. It's about us perceiving and receiving his message. So uh, with that, I think I will uh, wrap up today's session. Uh, we've basically touched on how to how to hear from God, okay, um, in, in the broadest sense. Okay, I'm looking at the chat now, Prabhakar. Uh, Pastor, how do we interpret accurately when God speaks through symbols? Okay, so uh, Prabhakar, the short answer to that is uh, understanding biblical symbols is very helpful. Okay, uh, so that can form the basis of our interpretation. But over and above, you know, sometimes there may not, we may not have a correlation. For example, if I see a car in my dream, there's no car in the Bible. How do I interpret it? Okay, so you really have to depend on the Holy Spirit. Uh, the way Daniel depended on the Holy Spirit, God uh, in fact, revealed the dream and gave the interpretation to him. So interpretation comes by the spirit. So one thing is to be well-versed in the word of God and, and the symbols in scripture. Uh, and if there is something that has no correlation, you basically just depend uh, you know, on, on the Holy Spirit. You can pray and say, okay, God, what were you trying to say? And then you get the interpretation. Okay, so I hope uh, that helps. Elisha, can this be equated to the gift of the word of knowledge in the New Testament? Yes. So uh, uh, the gift of no the word of knowledge, uh, Elisha, we usually classify the gifts of the Holy Spirit under some categories for, um, you know, ease. Um, one is revelatory gifts. Okay, Under the revelatory gifts would come things like word of knowledge, prophecy, word of wisdom. Basically, they reveal something from God's heart to us. So, um, yeah, so they are all, you know, part of the same same uh, uh, basket, you could say that. And I, I hope that answers your question. Mm, all right. Yeah. OK, so I think we've also run out of time today. Uh, so class, I, I really hope you are enjoying uh, these sessions. OK, so Kennedy says dark saying and how to know if it is true. So dark saying, Kennedy, is just symbolism. It's just symbolism. For example, if I see a lion uh, in, in, a, in a vision, I have to interpret it. A lion could mean the lion of Judah, or it could also mean the devil. He's like a roaring lion going about looking for whom he can devour. So it could be Satan. It de totally depends on the interpretation by the spirit of God. I need to understand, God, what are you saying? So a dark saying is just symbolism because by only looking at the symbol, you cannot tell what, what is being communicated. So that's all. Dark saying, symbol means those images which need further interpretation. 
okay all right uh, class i i think um, yes of course everything has to be interpreted in line with scripture uh, we've run out of time so let's pray and we'll wrap up because i know you have another class to catch too uh, uh, request someone to please pray so we can close okay can i pray madam yes please I heavenly father once again we are most grateful and thankful for the grace that you have bestowed on us this day we thank you for the knowledge that you have shared father through our pastor with us father we pray that any of us whom you have called to minister in the prophetic ministry be after the session of the after the end of this class father may this gift begin to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that whatever that we have learned and discussed here will be part of our ministry in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for an answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Elisha. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. See you again next week.